one of the latest bits I can find, May 7th, Kitzhaber declines to take sides in Nestle bottle plant protests. Kitzhaber announced last week that he would not take a position on the protests against the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife's water access request for a proposed $50 million Nestle Corporation water bottling plant, as reported by Hood River News. There is so there is a, a move, June twenty sixth coming up. Yeah, June twenty sixth. Uh, we just, we're we're just starting to do the outreach for this, so it's very new news as of today. But yes, on June twenty sixth, um, there will be a day of action um, at Perry Trunk Plaza at four o'clock in the afternoon in Portland, and we're looking to get you know as many people as we can, hundreds of people in the square. Um, we have guest speakers lined up as well, and it's it's definitely. Um, there's also some, some fun street theater. So, like, there's definitely a chance for people to get really involved, and uh, we will obviously be inviting the press to come to that event as well to really publicly call out the governor and say, you know, you can't just quietly claim you're going to not take a stance on an issue that, you know, you've heard from, you know, you've gotten a request from over 3,000 Oregonians to say no to Nestle. You, he's got the political backing. He needs to make the right decision. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sure he doesn't want to appear... Uh, pro Nestle. So, I mean, this is definitely like, you know, those are your options. Either you're with Nestle or you're with the Oregonians, and you don't get to um, claim neutrality on this issue. There's no such thing as neutral, and if you're the governor in this situation. All right. We're going to take one more break. Stick around for the second segment. Julia DeGraw of foodandwaterwatch.org discussing issue central to Oregon right here. <laughs> my friends. Welcome back to Corbett Report Radio. My name is James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com, guest hosting for James Corbett while he is on a much-needed vacation. And we've got one more segment with Julia DeGraw of FoodAndWaterWatch.org. Coalition protests decision to transfer public water to Nestle Waters, North America. That is one press release that you can find that we will provide for you in the show notes of this episode that goes right to FoodAndWaterWatch.org. And Julia, I'm in our first segment. I'm glad you mentioned that you guys basically aren't sort of what we worry about sometimes here as the sort of foundation funded organizations, and you wonder actually kind of who's funding who and what agendas are actually behind things. But as you said, there's a broad based coalition of when you have you know environmentalists and religious groups. I think when those kind of groups and all the others can can get together, we can really actually you know make make some change, can't we? I mean, like, you know, this argument that, um, well, we need them to come into town for the jobs. I mean, we're talking about less than 50 jobs. Mm-hmm. More realistically than what they're promising, we're talking probably something closer to 20 to 25 jobs. And, and you know, that's really not worth the trade-off for losing control of a vital public resource, and especially to a company that can't be trusted to... Um, to do what's best for the community. Um, and I do want to put out there, I mean, and also, I mean, I want to put out there uh, up front, the main reason my Food and Water Watch works on um, water issues is because water is a human right. It is a common resource, and it should not be owned or bought and sold by corporations. It is not for profit. And um, we think that our water system needs to be maintained as public municipalities. And the bottle of water is never going to be uh, okay. You know, it's, as long as the water is a common resource, we cannot be fighting it as a commodity at the same time. You can't have it both ways. So um, we really work on this from that perspective. Um, it, it is, you know, there are environmental issues that are important, important and valid, and there are other concerns. But if there was no environmental impact, we would be fighting this because uh, we, we cannot have... Um, corporate control of water in the system and guarantee that we're going to be guaranteed access to fresh water. That's, just, that's not going to be a part of the solution. And we, re- we really see there are essentially resource wars going on, uh, you know, all around the world. And 
Julia, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. I, I work at a grocery store, and I never mention it by name on the air. I just kind of like to keep the low profile. But it's one of our friendlier grocery stores in Oregon, and I see it on the shelves. And I'm glad you pointed out that Arrowhead is essentially owned by Nestle. We made the discovery not too long ago that, of course, oh, San Pellegrino, they're bottled by Nestle. So you can make those decisions. And, and as we say on this show, you know, the real revolution begins in, in your kitchen, in your medicine cabinet. We can just not buy bottled water first and foremost and especially avoid Arrowhead, San Pellegrino, any of those things that are that are owned by Nestle, right? That's a really good point, and something I think that's really important to note is that bottled water sales are declining, and mm-hmm. they're not going back up, and this is not just a recession issue. People figured it out. You know, n- there's nothing magical about spring water. They're figuring out that it's a pretty unregulated industry. Um, they're figuring out that there's issues with the plastic, even just public health issues. I'm not even talking about the waste issues. Um, they can leach chemicals and so on and so forth. Uh, so we actually have at Food and Water Watch a campaign called Take Back the Tap. And that's exactly what we're doing is you can't just, I mean, obviously we want to stop the development of the worst kinds of water bottling facilities with our limited resources. But something else we do with our limited resources is build this huge movement nationally, um, getting college campuses to ban bottled water, most county actually passed to take back the cap resolution in which they're not going to use taxpayers' money on purchasing bottled water anymore. So, yeah, we definitely need to be um, voting with our dollars here. Like, we need to de- decrease, you know, demand. You know, this is a supply and demand world, right? Uh, and, and something that I find really inspiring is that the largest decline in bottled water sales for Nestle has been from their Arrowhead brand. People in the West, that's the Western regional brand. People in the West... Um, are, are changing quicker than anywhere else in the country in their bottled water practices. They're not buying it as much. So, uh, you know, we're, we're figuring it out, and we just need to continue having these conversations with people because as soon as they think about how ridiculous it is to pay 5,000 times the price of tap water uh, to drink something that's not very regulated uh, and that's in a plastic bottle, they still go out and buy a clean canteen or some kind of reusable bottle and, and be done with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's as you just briefly mentioned. Not even getting into the the BPA and all of the you know personal health issues that that you're you know putting yourself up for. I'm so glad to to get you on the line. I really appreciate it. We're going to include all all the appropriate links and and, and things in the show notes of this episode, so people can take action. Because again, it's it's not just here. It's not just there. It, it's really going on everywhere. And I feel so kind of heartened that we've seen. I think. On the food arena, that's where changes have been made. I, I may not be able to stop, you know, the wars and the surveillance and all those things, but when people get motivated about BPA and pink slime and high fructose corn syrup and hopefully bottled water, we make we make gains. Yep, <laughs> we can change the world. We can really, and this is definitely a battle we can win. You know, Nancy doesn't have any water bottling facilities anywhere in the state, and we can keep it that way. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Julia DeGraw of foodandwaterwatch.org discussing something that's not only important to us, it's important to all of us. Water is a human right. Julia, thank you.